So I am Ryan Trujillo. Um, we are both from New Mexico Highlands University, which is from a uh, rural town in Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, very middle of nowhere, New Mexico. Um, I teach in the software systems design department, uh, primarily web programming languages and some courses in IoT and Arduino. Um, I'm also the lead developer of the Cultural Technology Development Lab, uh, where we work with museums uh, to basically create open source solutions using software and hardware. And I'm Becca Sharp. Um, I'm a grad student at New Mexico Highlands University in the MFA program. And uh, right now, a lot of my work really focuses on uh, using open source hardware and technology to talk about mental health and uh, invisible disability. So first off, I would like to thank uh, Ashwa and the Sloan Foundation, who have really just given us an opportunity to be a part of the Tra Trailblazers Fellowship. Um, part of our work uh, has been to uh, take our uh, exhibits electronics kit for um, called the Museduino. Um, we have been able to take time to actually put our documentation together and get certified this year. Um, also, we have been uh, revisiting a lot of our old projects um, to create basically a set of case studies um, to showcase some of the work that we've done with electronics uh, for museums across the state of New Mexico. So oftentimes when we work with museums, um, our goal really is to help them tell stories. Um, and that involves using some open source hardware uh, and electronics to help tell those stories. Um, oftentimes, some of those stories, um, integral parts of the stories are, you know, places, uh, either sacred sites, uh, sometimes they're buildings that are closed off to the public um, that are really inaccessible, but they help kind of help uh, narrate the exhibit. Um, so this picture here is of Los Alamos, uh, which is where the atomic bomb was built. So a lot of these buildings are like basically where they soldered a lot of the components to build the bomb. Um, most people can't actually visit this site. So a uh, museum that's close by um, actually wanted to highlight some of the uh, details about the event. And that led to uh, this project here in 2017 for the um, Manhattan Project National Historic Park. And what this was was a nine interactive drawers using open hardware to trigger audio LEDs and encourage people to smell things like burning electronics. And those were sense that it was gross, but <laughs> they were sense we made ourselves as well. And um, this experience was also followed with a 360 video um, of these buildings behind the fence. And this was built in 2017. I recently went back about six weeks ago and all of the open source hardware is still running flawlessly and it looks great. Yeah. So this leads to this year, we're working with the Los Luceros Historic Site it is the newest historic site in New Mexico. And um, the question is what happens when a cultural landmark open to the public for 200 years is suddenly locked shut? So I'll tell you what we do. Um, what I did was I got up pretty early. We got a 911 text from, from, the, cult from the site and they said, um, we have a tech emergency. They are closing the chapel, they're locking it up and they're not gonna allow anyone to go in. And this was a very important part of the building for this historic site. It has so much history just inside, but also the architecture and the work that was done in there. And so um, I did what I think anyone would do is got up pretty early, packed up my equipment, got an oversized coat and went down to the historic site. And I went inside the chapel and I began taking LIDAR scans and as many scans as I could and as much photogrammetry that I could get done before the elders of the church showed up to lock up the chapel. And so as I was, as I was finishing my last scan, I heard a door shut and I said, that's either the historic site like coming to warn me that they're here or that's the actual elders coming to lock the chapel. And so what I did was I put my equipment in my oversized coat, which is why it was important, sat down and I prayed to the open source hardware gods that I could get out of there. And um, what I did is I, I left and I was able to capture multiple beautiful scans that are now gonna be used in an interactive exhibit that will allow users to still see the inside of the chapel. Yes, and so these um, these buildings will also be 3D printed. So using Blender um, is our favorite open source software for that. We'll be 3D printing these buildings around the site. And it actually leads to um, this project, which is an interactive map of Los Luceros historic site. So this is a CNC uh, routed uh, map, and this will assist visitors with wayfinding. 
This um, map is really important because what we, we're actually using a local company in Las Vegas called Old Wood. And what we're doing is we're, we're planning on using some of the wood that was burned um, during the northern New Mexico fires last year. And actually, um, that actually caused us to evacuate from our school and not be able to attend for our finals. And so we're taking that wood and we're going to use it into this map to just bring something beautiful out of something that was really hard that happened. And so, and actually this day last year was when we were evacuated. So it's happy to be here, but um, we're also using Blender and we'll have many different electronic components that users will be able to wayfind around this beautiful historic site because it's awfully large. So uh, most of the times when we work with cultural institutions, um, they're really not so much bought into the idea of using open source hardware. Most times they use proprietary solutions. Well, normally with museums, they have exhibits that are sort of short span runs, right? They're only there for six months. Sometimes I buy equipment that is sort of one-off solutions that then when the exhibit leaves, it ends up in a back closet and they don't ever use it again because most proprietary solutions are sort of closed box, right? Where they can't edit or uh, modify um, any of the content. So they really become unusable after that. So our goal of using uh, open source hardware, we really have to make sure that uh, the components that we're using and um, to work with these institutions, we have to know that they're gonna be robust enough to support 100 plus visitors a day. Um, most cases, they also have to be low maintenance. So we really kind of drive that home with them because the most uh, that exhibit staff is willing to do is really flip a switch. Um, you can't really have them do much because they're not really trained to do anything else uh, in that regards. Um, there are some exhibit or employees that may have some knowledge. In most cases, uh, they really don't. Um, the other uh, sort of thing that's important about uh, building open source exhibits is affordability. We come from New Mexico where um, most museums there do not have large uh, budgets to be able to um, basically buy new hardware every time there's a new exhibit. So this really helps to kind of keep exhibits under budget. Um, the nice thing about this as well is that it's um, updatable or modifiable. So it really falls in line with sustainability. Um, so when an exhibit changes out, it means that we can change the, the software very easily. Um, we can also change components very easily. Um, another important factor is the ability to replicate and share. So other museums uh, can share together um, and use that as a, a, as a resource. Um, as part of our work, sometimes we also have to think about scalability. So our exhibit toolkit uses Cat5 cabling to sort of uh, make larger scale exhibits. So we have the microcontroller is the, the main controller, um, and we use Cat5 to like run you know 20 meter uh, feet long uh, cables so that we can you know build uh, an environment around a particular space. In New Mexico, a lot of museums are like historic buildings that are built from like um, Adobe. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth does not really work very well in those kind of buildings. Um, and then lastly, a ba major part is just using um, open source for accessibility. So we try to use interaction that meets accessibility standards. So really what that means in the museum world is closed fist interaction, meaning uh, basically can somebody interact with that exhibit um, using a part of their body. And so we use a lot of cap touch and like buttons to, to kind of help with that and a lot of auditory and visual aspects. So MP3 players are sort of are like our go to component. So our projects kind of range in a very wide uh, variety. Uh, this is a project we did in 2015. Um, this is uh, a sort of a volunteer run exhibit. Um, in uh, Carlsbad, New Mexico, small town. Um, and so they, some volunteers made this very small scale rendition of the town in the early like 1800s. And they, these two particular volunteers were really interested in model trains. And so they purchased a whole bunch of vignettes, um, basically motorized contraptions where right, um, that you can give it power and they just run, but they wanted some interaction. So what we did is we programmed uh, some Arduinos and some push buttons so that way um, each little vignette runs for like 30 seconds at a time. And um, we actually love open source hardware so much that we even put it inside a bathroom at the historic <laughs> site. So at the Hemis historic site in 2019, we built this lava wall and we really wanted to capture like the landscape that was that formed um, these that was formed by volcanic. Um, I'm sorry. We also wanted to um, capture the landscape that was 
um, formed by volcanic activity. And so what we did was made these really um, fun, they looked like Cheetos at first before you put them on the wall, but afterwards it worked, looked really great. And so um, the problem with these bathrooms is people would never turn off the light. And so we we're like, how can we make it fun? to turn off the light. And so we would have them turn off the light when they left, and that's when the lava would, would flow down. <laughs> and um, lastly, this was in, um, an exhibit for the New, Mexico, um, Museum Art, the New Mexico Art Museum in 2020. And so this was a photography exhibit um, titled Breathtaking. And so we started this project at the beginning of 2020. And we wanted a really nice illuminated sign for the um, for the museum, but then in March of 2020, um, the phrase like breathtaking really became something more intense and so much more um, than a sign. And so, as I was protesting during the day, in the evening, I was soldering LEDs and wondering how we can present this signage um, in the right way. And so uh, what we did is we made the lights um, slowly breathe. And so when people would come down to the exhibit, they could breathe with a sign when entering. And so this really like was a thoughtful project that we wanted to give um, to give the right meaning to and everything that they needed. And so this was in 2020. What We actually built it in 2020, but we weren't able to install it for at least nine months later. And I'll tell you again, the open source hardware worked perfectly when we opened up that box again to install. Um, so if you have any questions, you can find us on the Discord. I still have Twitter. I don't really use it that much, but I can still answer questions there. And uh, yeah, and I'm on Instagram, on Instagram for Beck Duino. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.